Congratulations on your choice of the most powerful, cellular-powered wireless commercial alarm system you can own. Let's get started by opening the box and examining its contents. The first thing you'll see are some tattletale signs to post around your work zone, a quick start guide, and an activation instruction sheet for EDGE, which is the platform used to control the system. You'll also find some Tattletale stickers and an informational text sheet for each Tattletale wireless sensor that was included in your system purchase. Now, take out the unbeatable, tamper-proof base unit for the Tattletale Pro. This is the system's brain, and we'll show you how to program it in just a few minutes. You'll also find the power cord for the base unit and a remote control keychain, which includes on and off buttons, as well as a pair of panic buttons. It's important to note that every component of your Tattletale system has a unique serial number, which identifies each transmitting and receiving part and allows it to communicate within the system. In most cases, the serial number will be posted on the exterior of the component. It can also be found inside the case, right on the transmitter. These serial numbers are very important. You will use them when programming and setting up your Tattletale system. Now you're ready to activate your Tattletale alarm system. Locate the EDGE activation instruction sheet, which looks like this. You can perform the EDGE activation process using the Tattletale EDGE app, which you can find in both the App Store or Google Play, or you can do it on your computer by going to your browser of choice and typing in edge.tattletale.com. The process is essentially the same on either device, but most people find it easier to perform the activation steps on their computer. At the end of this section of the video, we'll show you the steps to activate Edge using your mobile phone. When the Edge screen appears, press Register. And then, on the next screen, type in the serial number that's found on the bottom of the base unit. Select your unit type, which in your case is the Commercial or Pro unit. Next, you'll select your monitoring package. You can choose from text and email notification with the Edge app, central station monitoring with the Edge app, which includes additional features like calendar scheduling with auto on and auto off, or enhanced Edge with central station monitoring. Once you've made your selection, hit Next. On the next screen, you'll enter the username, which is your email address. Then add the password you want to use for your Tattletale system. Your password requires uppercase and lowercase letters, a number, and a special character. Now, confirm your password. Then, enter your last name, your first name, and your cell phone number. Then, hit Next. On the next screen, you'll enter some information that will be used by the dispatcher in the event they receive an alarm notification from your Tattletale. Start by adding the site name, the name of the property that you are protecting with your Tattletale system. Add the site phone number if there's a landline in place for your site. You can add special instructions to help police, fire, or medical personnel find your site quickly. And you can add the names of your local police and fire departments. It's okay if you don't know the exact names because when you enter your address and zip code, the system will automatically determine which stations respond to your location. If you have a special permit for emergency response, you can enter that. We suggest you check with your local police department to see if you need a special permit for your security system. And then you'll enter your street number, street address information, city, county, state, zip code, and your time zone. And hit Next. On the next screen, you'll select the order of notification in the occurrence of an alarm event. You can choose Contacts first, then Dispatch, Dispatch first, then Contacts, or Contacts only. Most users with central monitoring will choose Contacts first, then Dispatch, 
so they don't get charged by the police or fire departments for a false alarm. On the next screen, you'll select a verbal password, a code word to verify to the dispatch operator that it's actually you when you need to cancel an alarm response. And then don't worry about filling in anything under sort key. The system will take care of this automatically. Now it's time to fill in your contacts information. You can have three contacts to be notified in the event of an alarm. For each contact, you'll enter the last name, first name, mobile phone number, and email address. Next, you'll enter the billing information, beginning with the phone number and email address for the person responsible for billing. You'll select the billing frequency, either monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, or annually. If you choose to be billed monthly, you'll need to provide a valid credit card number to be kept on file. Then you'll enter the complete address for billing, unless it's the same address you entered earlier for the site location. When you've completed that, check the box that says you're not a robot. Hit register and you'll be asked to enter the activation code that's located on your activation instruction sheet. This verifies that your serial number was entered correctly. Hit OK and you'll be instructed to check your email to click on a link which will finish the activation process. Even if you have set up the Tattletale Edge app on your computer, you'll also want to have the app on your mobile phone as well. Here's how to get the Edge app on your phone. After downloading the app from the App Store or Google Play, click on the icon to open the app. You'll enter your username, enter your password. This will take you to the home screen, which gives you the opportunity to remotely arm and disarm your Tattletale. You can opt for an instant or delayed arming. When you press the button to arm or disarm your Tattletail, that action will take place immediately, but it may take a few seconds or more to receive verification of the action depending on the momentary strength of your cellular or Wi-Fi signal. Other functions and features of the Tattletail Edge phone app include the ability to view, add, or edit the location information for any Tattletail alarm systems you are currently using, view, add, or change information for your user contacts, set notification priorities to determine which users receive specific alerts, view the history of all actions, alarms, and alerts, you can take a test drive with your Tattletail system in which the monitoring center receives any alarm notifications but does not respond to them. And you can view the history of your test actions. And you can adjust your primary user settings. The only function you can't perform on your Phone Edge app is scheduling when you want your Tattletail to arm and disarm. This action can only be performed using the Edge app on your computer. Start by plugging the power cord into the base unit. On the display screen, you'll see the Tattletail logo, your version number, and a message to press any key to start the initial setup. After you press a key, you'll see a message reminding you that your Tattletail is a do-it-yourself system. Press 3 to agree and continue with the setup. Then enter a four-digit PIN. Use one you'll be able to easily remember, but not something too obvious or easy to guess. Next, you'll be asked to enter your mobile phone number, the number you'll want to use to receive alarm notification texts. Press 1 for yes, enter your phone number, and press enter. The next thing you'll be asked for is your email address. Whether or not you choose to add it is up to you. It's simply a double redundancy feature of your Tattletail system. Now you'll program your keychain remote. Press 1 for yes, then enter the serial number on the remote. Then choose the kind of panic alarm option you want. Police with siren, police silent, medical, fire, 
or panic disabled. When you need to send a panic distress signal, you do so by pressing and holding the two starred buttons on your keychain remote simultaneously. Now your system is set up, armed, and ready to defend your property. On the display screen, there are icons showing you the cell signal strength, the charging status, the battery status, and an icon indicating when the base unit's built-in motion sensor has been triggered. Using the base unit, you can arm or disarm the unit by pressing 1. Note that you can also remotely arm and disarm the system using the Edge application on your computer or phone. When you arm the system using the base unit, you will enter your PIN and then you'll have 60 seconds to leave the premises. The default time to disarm the unit when you enter the premises is 40 seconds. Both of these default times can be adjusted in your settings, but we won't get into that right here. On your base unit, you can turn the chime on or off by pressing 3. The chime is a noise the base unit makes when any sensor, motion, door, or window contacts, and so on, has been triggered. A note about the three LED lights on the front of your base unit. The top red light is illuminated when there is power to the unit. The middle red light is illuminated when the system has been armed. The bottom green light will flash when a signal is being transmitted to the monitoring center, and the light will briefly remain solid green to notify you that the signal has been received by the center. Once you've completed the powering up process, you can begin programming and adding sensors to your Tattletail system. On the base unit display, see where it says 5 for more. Press 5 and you'll be asked to enter your PIN. Now the first thing you can select is instant arming. This means there will be no 40 second delay when you enter the premises. The alarm will go off instantly. This option is not recommended unless you plan to disarm the system with the Edge app on your phone or with your keychain remote before you walk onto the job site. The next feature on the display screen is Review Log, which allows you to see all prior system activity. Of course, you can also access this information via the Edge app on your computer or phone. The next item on the main menu is a Chime On-Off button followed by the option to send yourself a test message and an option to change your PIN. Under all of that is the setup option. This is what you will use to add or change sensors, users, key fobs, contacts, and other system items. Currently, those system items include naming or renaming your system, changing the length of time before the alarm goes off upon entering, changing the length of time to exit the premises after arming the system, changing the duration of the siren sound, the default length is about eight minutes, changing the day and time that you receive your weekly auto test text message from the Verizon network, getting system reports, which again, you can access through the Edge app, you can also set up repeaters in order to increase signal strength for your sensors. You can adjust the backlight on your base unit display, change the number of digits in your pin, set a duress pin, and drill down even deeper to program additional settings. One of the advanced settings we'll be talking about later is the technician menu. This is something you'll use when you want to perform range testing on the placement of your sensors. When you want to add a sensor, begin by pressing 5 for more on your base unit. Enter your PIN. Scroll down to Setup, and then to Sensors, and then Add. After you've added your first sensor, you'll have the option to add, delete, change, or rename any of your sensors. Next, add the eight-digit serial number located on the sensor. Unless the sensor you are adding is a dual-function temperature sensor, click 1 for no. Tell the system where the sensor is going to be located. 
Then choose the type of sensor you are adding. Choose whether you want the sensor's action to be instant or delayed. Press Enter one more time, and now you can edit the name and other specifications of the sensor. Deleting a sensor follows the same series of steps, beginning with selecting five for more, then Setup, Sensors, Delete, and then choose the specific sensor you want to delete from the system. In the event that the sensor you are adding is a dual function temperature sensor, you would choose either three if you want it to be a humidity sensor, and five if you want it to be a water sensor. If you want to change it later on from humidity to water or vice versa, simply delete the sensor from the system and then re-add it as the type of sensor you want it to be used for. When you want to add a new user to your system, begin by pressing 5 for more on your base unit. Enter your PIN, scroll down to Setup, and then to Users, and then Add. Now enter a PIN that will be associated with that new user. You can then create a name for that user using the numerical keypad to select the letters for the user's name. After pressing Enter, you can determine which permissions you want to grant that user. By default, a secondary user only has permission to arm and disarm and bypass zones. If you want to grant the user additional permissions, you would select that permission and then press 1 for yes. Likewise, if you want to remove a permission for a user, you would select that permission and press 5 for no. Here's how to do a test to make sure your sensors are active and working properly. From the base unit main display, press 5 for more. Enter your PIN, scroll down and select Setup, scroll down and select System Items, scroll down and select Advanced Settings, scroll down and select Technician Menu. Select the option for Set Technician Phone Number. Enter the cell phone number for the person conducting the test. Press Enter to select the one hour TX margin test. And then press Enter one more time to start the test. This notifies the monitoring center that you are conducting a test of your sensors, so they understand that a triggered alarm during this test period does not constitute an actual emergency. Now you can mount your sensors and test them, or simply go to the location of the sensors you want to test. If and when any of the sensors you are testing is triggered, you will immediately receive a text message notifying you of the occurrence and letting you know the strength of that sensor's wireless signal. To end the test, go back to your base unit and repeat the steps to get to the technician menu. Then press Enter to stop the TX margin test.